Vladimir is interesting. It creates a couple of interesting dilemmas. Uh, it's a very um, interesting medicine because it, it's uh, from an adherence point of view, it's pretty great. You only have to take between eight and ten days of medicine a year. So for those patients that have a hard time with daily uh, or twice daily um, medications, this, this might be something worth thinking about. Um, in addition, the half-life on this is really short. It's about 24 hours, so it's in and out of you in about a week, week and a half um, after stopping. Even if you look at the guidelines with regard to breastfeeding, you know they say 10 days after the last dose, then you can then you're okay to breastfeed again. So it's in and out of you pretty quickly. So that's also nice because it's not something that lingers. Um, the data actually in the clinical trials, the Oracle trial and the Clarity study, would suggest earlier is better. But because of the safety profile, there is a boxed warning about malignancy and teratogenicity. Um, so you don't want to be taking it if you're thinking about getting pregnant or if you are pregnant for certain um, or if you're actively trying to get pregnant uh, and you know aren't using birth control you probably want to avoid this medicine um, also if you have any ongoing malignancy that you're struggling with probably would avoid this medicine um, but aside from that i think you know any, any patient who uh, has had had a significant amount of activity has failed some other medication either from tolerability or adherence or um, maybe just efficacy i think it's a good option um, the tricky thing is going to be finding that right balance for the, the right individual. It's interesting because, again, if you look at the data, the studies were initially early on. So Oracle was the CIS study, so people right at their very first attack, and they had a lot of benefit. It was very efficacious in that group. But it, but it also carries with it this new active SPMS indication. And, and there are a couple of studies that would suggest that, you know, as a surrogate marker, you could use an EDSS of 3.5 as a, a surrogate for secondary progressive. Remembering, if you look in the trials, Clarity was not a secondary progressive trial, and neither was Oracle. So they've never actually studied it in that specific population. But if you separate out this idea of an EDSS of 3.5 and forward, it showed pretty good efficacy in that group as well. So I guess what I would say with this medicine is if they've failed something before, if they're getting worse, this is an option. And, and it worked above 3.5 EDSS and below 3.5 EDSS. So it worked early or late. Um, one of the things that I think is worth thinking about with this medicine is that it is... It's an induction agent. Uh, you give it two doses and you don't dose it again the year three and year four because it can increase your risk of malignancy. So you're really giving it for two discrete doses, talking about 20 days of therapy, maybe 16 to 20 days of therapy over two years and to get some durable efficacy. So the what's nice about it is that I think, you know, there um, if you if you had a patient who can't they can't get it together with their medicines or if they, they just can't stick with their regimen or they can't tolerate things. This is a medicine that from a day to day is pretty easy to tolerate and it's also a medicine that's pretty easy to adhere to. Um, and then you just have to watch out for the downsides, which is the, you know, the malignancy risk, which is not nothing, but it's actually a pretty small risk.